Hi there, my name is Noma. Thank you for joining me for this podcast episode. Today I have a few things that I'd like to show you, but first I'll talk about what I'm wearing. So I'm wearing the Leruo Cat again. This was a collaboration with Brooklyn Tweed, and I launched the pattern in April this year. It's an open front cat again with no buttons, and it's really one of my favorites currently as we're getting into spring. So the cat again was designed along with the Leruo top, which is a V-neck long sleeved top. And I used Brooklyn Tweed um, imbue worsted for this one and the imbue spot was used for the top. So both are in the color Warbler and it's a beautiful golden color that's got some green and red speckles. It's a very lovely color to work with, a, a very lovely yarn to work with. And um, I have been working on a hat unsuccessfully, but I'll talk about my hat issues later on when I'm talking about my works in progress. So this is worked from the top down and it's got some raglan sleeves and the edging is very simple. It's just two by two ribbing and I did a stretchy bind off and it's the same at, at, as the hem as well. So all around the, the neck bend and the front edges, I did some double knitted bend and I made it a little thicker than I would normally do because it's going to be an open one and I wanted something more substantial and this really added something that I, I love about this cardigan. It's um, available in 10 sizes so I hope there's something for everyone. It's available on Ravelry and Etsy so if you'd like to check it out I'll include some details below. This is a cropped, it's not really cropped that much but it's kind of cropped. You can easily adapt it for something longer or make it even shorter than mine depending on your needs it's very flexible since it's worked from the top down um i love ripping as you can see i'll show you another ripped project later on and i don't mind knitting some ripping i know there's some people who do not like ripping that much my issue is stocking it i can knit some ripping all the way to my feet if i'm doing a coat i don't mind but stocking it stitch well, that's a bit of a challenge for me. So it was a fun one for me to knit. Um, I used 4.5 millimeter needles on this one and it's a worsted weight yarn. So it was also a very quick project. I think my gauge was 20 stitches and 32 rows. So it was a very quick one. And the next thing I wanna talk about is something I'm very excited about because I worked on this project in literally three days or so. And it's been tested done and it's finally live it went live yesterday and it's the small strip show it's my one skin show okay in this case it's one ball of yarn because super ball comes in a ball but um i used super ball crazy and this color is domino it's the black white gray and some mold black and light gray it's so much fun to work with this. I, I really love this color. I mean, they've got more bright colors in their collection, but I've always loved this one. I would love to try a different one, maybe something that's got some pink or some blue. But in the meantime, whenever I am um, shopping for this yarn, I always end up buying this color. I think I've done three or four designs with this exact same shade that's just how much i love it so it's worked from one tip to the other and the most important thing here is to just weigh your yarn when you're starting out and work the first half to the center and then um, decrease and work to the other end i still had a bit of some leftovers because when you're shifting from the increases to the decreases, you have to complete a repeat and not just leave it in the middle. So I didn't have enough yarn to start another repeat and sort of like work two more repeats here in the center. So this was the leftovers that I had. I think it's about 12 grams or so, but this yarn is, it's got some really generous yardage because I think it's about 400 meters. So that's quite a lot of yarn. So the stitch here is a very simple one and it's very um, easy to knit really. It's a mindless knitting. 
But the most important thing about this design and the inspiration behind it was something that you can knit and use any type of yarn that you've got, whether it's speckled, tonal, solid, or you've got some neon, anything really to just create something simple you can throw around. I don't want to disturb my microphone just in case it's irritating. Uh, let's see. So you see, it's a little scarf and I love little scarves. I think I've got seven or eight patterns now. No, maybe nine that uh, I need with just a single skein because it never really gets so crazy cold here. Or at least I never really feel that cold on my neck. And just a single skein project really works very well for me. So I'll show you a couple of ideas that you can try any speckled yarn so most of my testers used some speckled yarn i think there was only one who had the exact shade that i used here and she used more than one skein so her shawl is much larger and very beautiful so you can use any speckled yarn as you can see this is lightly speckled it's a nice beautiful golden color and i think this would work very well this pattern would work very well well and here are some examples and with this one i was thinking you know you can use the dark the light color for the stockinette section and the dark color for the uh, for the gutter stitch i think it would look very pretty and here's another option this is also some speckled yarn you can use this or you can combine these two and do the stockinette and the gutter stitch or you can just do a plain solid and just add a pop of color and the other one i thought of was a neon this would also look so good with a neon color and some light peach or the other option that you can try is a decay weight so i know some people live in much colder places and you don't want to knit a fingering weight little scarf but you can easily work on this pattern using some thicker and the finished project of course is going to be thicker and won't have the same drape that you have here unless if your yarn has got some silk i think you'll still get some good drape but you can still make your shawl with some decay weight some worsted or iron weight yarn and get a much larger um, finished project but a warm and comfy one so the options are endless really if you've got that skein of yarn that you are not sure of just uh, give it a try i'm sure you're gonna love it so this pattern is available on ravelry and etsy and it's currently 20 percent off until sunday the 22nd of september just in case somebody watches this sometime later i need to be specific about the date it's going to be valid until Sunday, the 22nd of September, 2024. So that's the small street show. And then the next thing I want to talk about is another show project. So when I finished this one, I was really on a high with the show knitting and I decided to design something else. The last time I recorded a podcast, I think I had only done this little section here. Okay, let's see. Is this the ending or the beginning? Yeah. I had just done this part, I think, and I wasn't happy with it because the increases here had been too close to the edging. I hadn't left some space and the increases were direct on the eye cord. Somehow it wasn't neat and it was pulling too tight, but now it's very soft, as you can see, and stretchy which is what I really love about uh, ripping patterns. So it starts from this point and it increases all the way to the center here. And then the decreases are done. So this is worked on two skeins of yarn. So the first skein is works up to here and the second one does the decreases. So it's very simple and straightforward. I wanted something much larger than the small street shawl. So I did a two skein version. Let me pull it up here as you can see it's much bigger and it's got more depth in the center oops let me see if i can put it on without disturbing the microphone okay so it's something like this 
Okay, so this painting is done. I put out a call for testers because I was kind of almost sure that the pattern was ready. But then it turns out there are issues with the increases. And the issues are not so big, but there's a need for some uniformity somehow. And to make the charts more cohesive, I still have to work on that. And we've, once we're done with the editing and everything, it's going to be back for testing. So I had to pull it from testing. We hadn't even started yet, by the way, but I felt that there was a bit of some work that needed to be done, even though initially I thought it was ready. And then I'll be chatting with my tech editor and we'll work it out until it's sorted. So this pattern is basically two by two ribbing with some cabling. I've used this stitch for some socks and a coat that I launched on my birthday earlier this year. It's one of my favorite stitch patterns. It's cables that are so elegant. I love cables, but I love the elegant cables even more. And I love ripping, so it's a match made in heaven. This is how it looks up close. It's quite stretchy, as you can see. And once I blocked it, it relaxed quite a lot. And because the yarn has got some silk content, I love the sheen that you have on the cables. So I'm, I was using uh, blue sky fibers, and the yarn is Skyland, and the color is Red Sky. It's really a beautiful color, and I love it, and I'm going to be wearing it next year, because now we're getting into spring and then summer. I might wear it once or twice when it gets cold, but it doesn't really get that cold for a bigger scarf. I normally wear the single skein ones. So it's going to be up for testing soon. I'll have to get that pattern sorted. And then I think it will be launched beginning of November. Initially, I had planned to publish this later in October, but it's not going to happen. So it's going to be in November, early November. I'm still working on the same works in progress. I tried with the heads. I started a number of heads. I don't know what's wrong with me and heads. I've designed them in the past and I've loved the ones that I've done, but somehow I do a lot more frocking on heads than on sweaters. I can start a sweater and knit it from start to finish in one go. But when it comes to heads, I somehow make them either too small or too big because I get too carried away with the stitch patterns that I want to use. And then they don't work out the way I want it. It's, it's, it's a mess. So the two heads that I started are not here with me today because they've been frogged and I'm sitting on the ideas trying to figure out how to work around them because I like those ideas and I don't want to give up on them but there is some stuff that's going to happen before those heads become heads. The heads in my mind become real life heads. So I'll be working on those soon. So mostly you'll just see the old stuff that I had last time but I've made quite some progress on all the pro on all the projects I was working on. The first one is this Naleli pullover. It's a raglan as well. And it's worked from up here and with a chibula cast on and this double knitted band here on the neck, which really is very pretty and makes the project look neat. I did some short rows to shape the back neck and then some raglan all the way and now i'm on the body so both sleeves have been worked and that's i think one of the reasons why i love reckling uh pullovers reckless and circular yokes i normally work until i'm done with the whatever skin i was working on after separating the sleeves and the body and then i go back to work the sleeves i don't do that with drop shoulder patterns though because you never know how far it's going to drop when you've blocked so mostly I prefer working on the body, finishing it, and then blocking it, trying it on, and then seeing how long I want to make the sleeves. But with circular yokes and raglan tops, I like working on the sleeves, getting them out of the way. So this is almost done, really. And I've done more than 6 inches or 15 centimeters of the body. I think I'm at around 6 inches. So the this one looks very simple and plain but at the bottom it's going to have some interesting shaping and the back part and the front are going to be separated so that it's got some opening on the sides so 
it's not going to be that plain, but it will have some interesting details. You know, I think that's what makes simple garments extra special because there are a lot of unique elements that you have to add in order to make them look extra special. And I love that about simple garments. And then the next thing I want to talk about is this pull, not pull over, the Hudson vest right here. It's all over cables. So I just realized I forgot my swatch that I used for this project somewhere. Let me grab it and then I'll continue with this video. Okay, I'm back. So I wanted to talk about swatching for cable projects or even lace or any other textures that are very busy. So let me show you the swatch. So this is the swatch for the Hudson vest. As you can see, it looks slightly different. You look at this, the cables are still scrunched together and the swatch more relaxed. Um, so as you can see, I did um, three repeats of the pattern. And that's important when you're working on something like this because you don't want to make a very tiny little swatch that's maybe just one repeat. And then when you proceed from there, you just have this tiny little thing. You're checking your gauge. Somehow it could mess up with your accuracy. But I did 50 stitches, and I think that was three repeats on this pattern. So when I measured this, it was about seven inches wide. So I'm gonna be talking inches because I've forgotten the numbers and centimeters. So this is uh, 50 stitches and seven um, inches wide. So when you divide 50 by seven, you get about 7.1. So this swatch is, uh, when you look at the swatch, it's seven stitches per inch on this cable. So normally when you're working with some worsted yarn and five millimeter needles, you would really expect to get a much bigger gauge, uh, maybe four stitches or so. But in this case, it's seven stitches because these cables are braided together as you can see here. So it creates a much uh, denser fabric. It's still stretchy and it doesn't feel heavy, but it's about seven stitches. And I think f I did a full repeat, which is 24 rows and it was about 3.5 inches, so you also divide that. So my point is, when you're doing your swatch for projects like this, do a much larger one with more pattern repeats. I did three in this case. And then you measure the whole thing and then divide to get um, the number of stitches per inch, which is seven in this case. So it's going to be 28 stitches. And okay, I'm not so sure of the rows, I didn't calculate that i didn't keep that the numbers in my head i've just written them down but once you do that then it's much easier to get a more accurate gauge because it's difficult to count the number of stitches like what we normally do with stocking a stitch that you just put the the gauge ruler and you just count the number of stitches it's quite different with such stitch patterns and sometimes with even some lace because you've got a lot of uh, eyelids or whatever and it's very difficult to count the stitch numbers but when you do your swatch measure the whole thing and then divide the stitch numbers by the um, width that you have in inches or centimeters then it becomes so much easier to get your accurate gauge so this is the swatch for this and this is the vest that i was working on for the longest time. It's almost done. Now I've separated the front and back. The body took a while, by the way, because I had so many distractions, but it's done. And that was a lot of knitting. And I love cables. So it didn't feel that bad. But what I wanted when I, I was designing this was this statement piece that I can wear with these solid colored shirts, whether it's white, cream, or even black, and just have these cables all over the place i really wanted this so i've mentioned this before with this pattern i didn't work on it it's knit in the round but the pattern is not exactly worked in the round what i mean by that is that for the front section uh, i work the pattern flat and then i would repeat the very same thing at the back so it's not continuous because these are traveling cables had i worked it in that way that would mean 
after a certain point in the pattern, I'll have to shift the beginning of row maybe to this point, for example. And then when I get here, it will have to shift back to this point. So I'll have to keep shifting back and forth um, for my beginning of round because it can't be in the middle of a cable like this. Or when it's traveling, it can't be in the middle of some traveling cable. So instead, I decided to work it flat. So the front part will just be worked as if you are knitting flat. And then the back part is worked with the same repeat that you did for the front. It's very straightforward in the pattern. You don't have to worry about the details. Maybe I'm not explaining this in a cohesive way. But one thing that happened that I really loved, you end up with this seem like situation here. OK, let me, sorry about my noisy needle. OK, so as you can see, you end up with this section that's just reverse stocking it. But what it does when it's folded like this is that it creates some four seam so it folds nicely and it folds really flat because there's no cabling anywhere in this section. If you look closely at it folded here, it will have folded over some cable and it will create some bulk on the side. But because it folds on those reverse stockinet stitches, it's so nice and flat. So this is not something I planned, but it worked out so well in the end. This is how far I've gone. I'm almost done with the back. I think I've got about four inches left. Then I'll do some short rows and leave some stitches for a three needle bind off. And then to the front, I did a survey on Instagram on whether I should do this as a V-neck or a crew neck. And most people voted for the crew neck. So I'll be doing a crew neck. And deep down, I wanted a crew neck as well. So it worked out just fine. A V-neck is OK, but I think it's more traditional. And nowadays, mostly you see um, crew neck vests or slipovers all over the place. So this is what I ended up doing. So I hope the swatching made sense and you won't have a hard time when working with similar projects that have got all over cables or all over lace or whatever texture. And then the last one, no, it's not the last one. The next one that I have on my needles is this fish half fisherman rib um rib cardigan i've joined the front and back now i'm just working back and forth on the body sorry about my needles let me just tap them up here and see if it doesn't get any more irritating or oh, let me do it this way on the ball of yarn Okay, so this is how it looks at the back. I love these lines. I think they create some interest on the garment. So I've joined. I'm doing half fisherman rib. So the way I'm doing it, it's not, I'm not doing it the same way as you do the brioche stitch or some variations of the fisherman uh, rib. Whenever I'm working on the knit stitches, I knit one below and I just peel normally. And when I'm working on the other side, the pearl stitches become the knit stitches. Then I knit them below and pearl normally. That's how I learned when I was a kid. I don't see those instructions so often when I'm looking at stitch dictionaries. But that's the easiest way for me to work without having to think. Every time I try another method, I end up making mistakes and I have to frog back. And it's a nightmare to put the stitches back. Because I've had to frog a bit on this one. But I'll talk about that when I turn the project around. However, it's so easy to get the stitches back because you know exactly how the loops should look like. It's more straightforward than with the other methods I've seen. I'm sure most people have worked with the ones in the books and they make sense, but I'm just used to knitting below and peeling normally. And on the wrong side, I uh, I still knit below and peel normally, but it's the opposite stitches. So it looks the same on both sides. And it works just fine. The instructions are going to be as, as straightforward as possible not the way I'm saying them somehow explaining verbally is so difficult and this is my cake of yarn I think this was 225 grams when I was winding it from the corn I wanted to have uh, enough yarn to finish the body and this thing it's a it's up a lot of yarn and takes quite a bit of some time to to finish because of the knitting below so yeah that's how far I've gone 
and I'm, I'm hoping to launch this maybe early December so that when you need it, it's going to be ready maybe end of Feb, just before you get into spring. So this is how it looks. I don't know if you can see it clearly. Um, the front is now beginning to wrap over. It's now kind of wider than the center. So it's somewhere there. Unfortunately, I can't hold this properly. But it's now right over here. So the biggest challenge, and the reason why I'm saying I've been frogging this a bit, is the rate of increase. I think whenever you're designing a a wrap kit again that's the most challenging part but i've noticed that with this stitch that shrinks on itself you can't work on this as rapidly as you would with a stock in it i noticed that whenever i was working more rapidly i would end up with uh, my stitches almost here before i can even get to the point where i want the length of the cardigan to reach so i had to be more gradual in my increases now they are quite gradual and it's moving at the right pace. I'm going to do a double knitted bend all around. So it's going to be a bit of some knitting then. It will take a while, but I'm loving it. I'm really enjoying the stitch pattern. Like I said, whenever I need a break from my stocking it project, but I don't want to do something as complicated as cables, I go for this project. It's been a lifesaver really when I was too bored for my stocking it or too tired for the cabling and i think this is the first time i've had some really varied projects in a long time where i can pick something different depending on how easy or how hard it is to work and still get some satisfaction there was a time i think two episodes ago where i had stuck in a stitch only on my needles it drove me crazy but i'm okay with having one stuck in a stitch project when i'm busy with something i've been re-watching prison break and you know that show kind of gets you so hooked you don't even want to look at your work and everything so it's helped to have a stock in it project that i can knit without looking much and this is the in-between project not as complicated as the cables but not as simple as the stock in it so it's been a go-to project in between and my very huge cake i can knit from the corn i don't know if other people do knit from the corn but I've had to wind my yarn from the corn to make these very big cakes. Um, what else? Oh, the last thing I want to talk about is another hat that I'm working on. Guys, this yarn is amazing. I used this yarn for the Lufuno hat that I did for Bare Naked Wools for their red uh, scarf fundraiser project that they do every year. I did this two years ago and I had some leftover yarn. And i'm designing a hat this is a three by two ribbing hat when i started it i was really excited about it but now i'm having ideas that i don't like it okay it's not like i don't like it but that's just me and hats so this is some worsted weight yarn i've got the bend here so i could share with you it's bare naked wools uh this is better breakfast worsted and the color is daybreak it's a beautiful shade of gray and you know when it comes to bare naked wools i love their heathered yarns they are amazing they're so beautiful i've worked with their fingering weight yarns as well and they've been really great so this is the head i'm not so sure if you'll see this again if i'll continue with it i wanted something simple for myself but I might even give it to my husband if I finish it because he works outdoors and he always needs hats. For those who do not know, my husband is a professional tennis coach and most of the time he's outside. So when it's cold, he wears all the hats that I make for him. So when it's cold, the hats come in very handy. But I'm not so sure if I'll continue with this design. Somehow I'm not feeling it that much. I'm still waiting for a wave of inspiration i was really enjoying it when i cast the sun like i said this yarn is amazing it's literally one of if i was to pick some top three yarns i've worked with this will be part of the top three definitely that's just how good it is there's something i i don't know what it is about the yarn but when you're knitting with it it's got this buttery feel 
and you just keep going and it's so relaxing so um i definitely want to do something i even considered doing some cable head but i really wanted something simple so i'll see what i can do i'm still thinking about it i've put it on hold for now so this might not feature in my works in progress the next time i just need something to carry around this is the only project i've been carrying when i was leaving the house now we're on some short break from school for the next week so i need to come up with something i'll knit i'll be knitting when school's open so when we're moving around i have a small project to carry around but I'm still uncertain about the future of this project. I have to really dig deep for some inspiration and knit a hat. I just need to knit a hat or two. I need hats in my life and everybody else in my family does. So for my kids, I always buy patterns from um, the Velvet Acorn. I love hair hat patterns. That's what I need for my kids. I don't have to worry about their heads. But for the adult ones, I try to design my own or come up with ideas. In the meantime, it's a bit dry on the ideas. I, I start something and I don't like it. So I have to really find an idea that is so inspiring that I can't put it down. I can't put down ripping, but I, I didn't want to do something that's been done already countless times so i'll have to dig deeper and come up with something else that's me and my life with hats more frogging less knitting when it comes to head to, to knitting hats so that's all that i have that's been done but i just wanted to give you a brief a glimpse of what i'll be working on number one i'll be working on this pull over it's a winter pull over or oh, yeah it can work even in the autumn but by the time it's launched it's gonna be winter in the northern hemisphere at least um i'll be knitting this with um pearl soho plenty and the color is ash gray so as i've mentioned before i'm gonna mention this again just in case you're watching this for the first time all the yarn that I work with from Pearl Soho is sponsored yarn. I didn't pay for it. I just received the yarn to design whatever I wanted to design. No strings attached beyond designing something with the yarn. So this one is plenty. It's a worsted weight yarn. I love the feel of it and it's so soft and warm and cozy. So I'm looking forward to designing this. I've just realized that with all the projects I spoke about, I didn't even mention which yarn I was using. Somehow I, I get the feeling that it's the same people that have been watching those projects that are going to watch, which is really crazy. So a quick one for the Half Fisherman Rib project. I'm using African Expressions Harmony. It's an Aran weight yarn and the color is 2062. Their colors are in numbers, not in words, but it's a dark gray. And then for this vest, I'm using... Uh, the Yarn Collective's uh, Hudson Worsted, and the color is Smoke. And then for the uh, Reglan Pullover, I'm using this yarn, Cashmere Merino Bloom. The color is Warm Honey. This is Pearl Soho as well. Yeah, so that's all. I did mention the yarn for the red scarf, that's Blue Sky Fibers and it's skyland in the color red sky so this is the f one of the projects i'll be casting on probably the next time i come back here i'll be done with the vest and the regular and pull over that's in this color those two have to be off my needles then there'll be this pull over and then i'm planning on casting on a shawl it's gonna use these two colors I think it's going to be my carry around project whilst it's still small. It's not going to be really that big. It's just two skeins of um, sport weight yarn. This yarn is Miss Lamotte and it's the twist sock. It's a sport weight. It's a very nice one to work with as well. And this one is also Miss Lamotte and it's the same yarn weight as those two. Um, so the, one of these is called the Botanist. I don't remember the name of the other one because I've had these yarns. I think from around 2018 or 2019 so it's 
a long it's been a long time but i'll check the names from my uh receipts on my emails and i'll have the correct color when i put this down on the description box and then the last project i'm planning to cast on i'm not sure if i'll have the time is a scarf this is some cotton yarn from um Paul Soho as well and this color is peach peony it's a very beautiful sport weight as well so i want to knit a lace scarf so i wanted a cotton scarf because sometimes it's warm but i want to add some thing some accessory to an outfit so i need to do this one in cotton you can work on it in wool like i mentioned it's easy to just change around and do something different based on where you are and your climate here it's usually very warm we've generally got about seven warm months and five cold months so we've got more summer than winter basically so i'll be knitting a scarf a single skein scarf i like those ones so for those that have been around i've just launched my 199th pattern you'll notice that right from the time i started designing i've loved these little scarves i don't like heavy items on my neck i never have really so i'm going to be doing another scarf that i can just tie up and it's nice and small it's going to be a single skein project as well and it's very easy to substitute i think you can even go down to some heavy fingering or you can go up to some light decay it doesn't have to be some sport weight because i know in some places it's very hard to get some sport weight yarn so this is a cotton one that i'll be knitting but you can knit this with wool or some wool blend anything goes really it's a very plain solid color so it's very easy to substitute so that's just about it next time we meet i'll be done with these two projects the vest and the red lane pull over this one will still be ongoing it's a very big project i still have to do the sleeves and whilst i'm sitting here and talking i'm beginning to think that the best time to launch this will be sometime maybe in the um spring early spring because it's a sort of like cropped uh rep cat again that's just a very relaxed look and definitely not meant for the winter so i'll see how i'm gonna work around it and have it out there ready for you so there's still another project that i was working on the button down blouse using my yak baby yak lace held double it's still on hold because i ordered the yarn and it's still on its way it's gonna get stuck a bit on customs and then i'll eventually get it probably maybe in the next two weeks or so then i'll continue and finish that one then and i've still got the dress as well for those that have seen previous podcasts i had to fix the pocket issue so i have to frog back and knit down that one is launching in february on my birthday so i want to have it ready end of november written take edited and ready for testing so that the test starts beginning of december and is launching in february so there'll be almost three months to test it i decided that it was best to launch it then after meeting a couple of hurdles with the dress so that if you start working on it in february you definitely will have it ready by the summer so for those that are in the northern hemisphere it's going to be ready for you in the summer and for us here you can still work on it throughout the winter and have it ready for spring and summer that still works just fine for everyone so that's all that i had to share with you today thank you so much for joining me i'll link everything in the description box below so you can check out the yarn names the links to some patterns that i showed and everything else in between thank you so much for watching bye bye